Welcome to On Microsoft. Conversations with thought leaders in Microsoft technologies. Hi, my name is Lisa Feigenbaum. I'm a program manager on the Microsoft Visual Basic team. Worked on the IDE team, now I'm a community PM. Been involved in Link 2005 and 2008. And I'm here with Paul Vick today. Paul, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. Well, actually, I worked on the Visual Basic team for 10 years. Um, I actually just recently made a move um, over to the Oslo team. Um, having worked on VB for a really long time, I decided I'd try something new, and that's been uh, fun. But, uh, but my heart has definitely, I've spent most of my career at Microsoft uh, working on Visual Basic, and it's definitely where um, you know, a lot of my uh, passion still lies. So. Great. So, so what was the the last release that you've been working on for Visual Basic? Well, today I was we were talking about the the latest version of the language, which is 10.0, which is kind of hard to believe that we've reached that many uh, versions of the language. But uh, talking about the features in the latest release here at the, you know at the PDC, um, and you know I think the the after the really big release we had in 9.0, which was the link features, all the database stuff that was really major innovation. What we've really been focusing on in this release has been um, what I would call like sort of more bread and butter developer productivity. So basically looking at uh, the kind of tasks that day-to-day -day developers do and finding ways to make it easier for them uh, to get the work they need to be done work done that needs to be done in kind of in the most efficient manner possible. So most of the language features we've been doing have kind of been centered around that idea. Um, and we can kind of maybe talk a little bit about those. Yeah. Um, that sounds that sounds very VB like, right? Yeah, productivity. Exactly. That makes sense. So yeah, what are some of those features? Well, I think the biggest one actually is the biggest one is actually the simplest one, um, but it's and probably the one people have been asking for the very longest. Um, you know, VB is a very line oriented language, and so for a long time, anybody who's used VB, um, when you know when you write. When you write a, co a line of code longer than the screen, you want to wrap it around. You have to put the underscore character in there right. to kind of continue the line. Um, and what we've done is we've gone through the language grammar and really identified the places where uh, most people will want uh, do line continuations and then eliminated the need for to put those in explicitly. So we haven't eliminated them completely from the language. There's still places where for um, ambiguity sake or just for reasons that we didn't think they were important, you'll still have to put them if you want to break up a line. But um, but in the most common places, like in the middle of a link query, it's really commonplace, or um, you know, in a list of parameters or an array initializer, you can actually just, at the end of the line, you just hit return and you go and there's no no underscore required or anything. So uh, so you Exciting. actually... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, again, it's one of those really, really simple features that um, uh, you know, don't seem like they would be a big deal, but sort of as you get in the day-to-day -day flow, it's just, it's so nice. <laughs> I know with Link and the XML integration in the last release that, you know, it was kind of confusing when to have your underscore right. and when not, so exactly. it should really help for typing and for readability. Yeah, yeah, it'll be, it'll be great. It'll, I think it'll be really, uh, it's consistently when we've done some internal presentations and presentations to, uh, you know, people who come in and look, to look at things, uh, it's, it's the one feature that's guaranteed <laughs> to get an applause line. So so that that's really great, actually. So, so how did you decide where where to enable this? Um, you know, basically looking at the most common places. Um, you know, sort of anything, any place where you start, usually a list, or like where you're continuing a list, uh, anything like that, or um, uh, you know, in between. It's usually where you have multiple pieces of a part of the language, and you know, inevitably people want to break those up. Right, and for so formatting. That, exactly, and, yeah. exactly. And I think you know, most of us on the VB team use VB on a regular basis, and so we encounter the same frustrations that everybody else you know, sort of has with the language, and so uh, we have a sort of a deep experience with where we'd like you know, the line continuations to go away with. So go away. From your 10 years, how many releases have you heard that request? Uh, actually, every single one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and we've been trying to get it in every single one. But, it, you know, from a technical standpoint, it's interesting because uh, although it's a very simple language feature from a technical standpoint in terms of getting it in the compiler and getting especially the IDE, right. the, the editor, to work correctly, it was a, it was a challenge. So, so yeah. So, um, yeah, and, and, you know, that's, I think most of the features actually that we, uh, I, I kind of, it's kind of nice because most of the features we're doing in this release are things that I always found annoying. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, in addition to line continuations, the thing that comes to my, my mind is, um, you know, I always have to do a lot of properties. You know, when I'm creating classes, I'm creating objects and stuff like that. Sure. There's lots and lots of property declarations, and I always hated the fact that, you know, you had to do declare a, a field, a private field, and then you have like 15, seems like 500 lines of code to do properties. And so now we have also, you know, simplified properties, which allow us to just in a single line declare you know, just declare a simple property that creates the field, the getter, the setter, all for you. And so, like, you know, in a lot of the classes that I write, that eliminates, you know, probably a third to half of the code just because, uh, you know, I'm following the correct coding guidelines and also, you know, properties are needed, necessary for things like data binding and that kind of stuff. So, so what does that line look like? currently what do I type today well it'll actually look exactly like um, it'll actually looks exactly like a property declaration but without the rest of the, the goop so hmm. you know just property X as integer and that it looks like exactly like a field declaration except you put the word property in there um, and then you if you want to you can still now you can go and you can expand it out to a full property and, and we do still support that completely but um, for I think a lot of people who are write simpler properties, it's it's just a very quick way of, of um, declaring them. So. Sure, I always use the property snippet, <laughs> exactly. which helps put it in, <laughs> it helps insert the code, but then you still have to to read and maintain all that code. Exactly, so. and you know there there are like tools that you know collapse it and make it go away. Right. And I mean, but it's it's just nice to you know nice not to have to have a. a feature, uh, you know, an additional tool for that or something like that. So how does so. that work? Is there still a backing field there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what we'll do is um, it would be just as if you had a private field with an underscore under the name of the proper property and then the getter and setter that just set and retrieve that field. So it actually, um, it works exactly like the code that the snippet would write for you. Right. It's just that you can, you don't have to have the snippet there. So when should you use fields and when should you use automatic properties? Um, I think in general, as long as, you know, it kind of, it, it doesn't really change that. That I think that mostly internal information, it's just easier to use fields. You don't have to go through the indirection of properties. But um, for, uh, for anything that is being exposed outside of your class, sort of the general guidelines are to use properties for that. So that, make, mm -hmm. that makes it a lot easier to follow those guidelines. Right. So any other places where VB10 is going to save me some code? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, let's see. So I'm sort of going mentally through my list here. You know, line continuations, properties. Um, another thing, another feature that's uh, very uh, requested was a number of improvements to the way that Lambda expressions work in the language. Mm -hmm. So in particular, two things, there were two limitations that we had that we're removing. Uh, so the first is that um, uh, Lambdas right now are only functions. So they can't be, um, they, they have to be expressions that return a value. So a lot of places... Uh, people would want to create one line um, like event handlers or something like that. But events don't ever return values, and so you just couldn't do it in VB. And so now you'll be able to say, you know, add handler, whatever, sub, and then an expression that doesn't necessarily return a value instead mm. of function. Um, so that's one, one improvement we're making. The other improvement is allowing you to have multiple uh, multiple statements inside the Lambda. So today... It's just a single expression on right. the same line. And now we'll, you'll be able to expand it out. It'll look like uh, just a regular sub or function declaration. Um, and so um, you'll be able to put multiple statements in there. You'll be able to um, do like if and for and all those kinds of fun things. And, um, and we'll actually, uh, you'll be able to do multiple return statements if it's a function. And we'll infer the return type for you, just like with a regular Lambda expression. Um, or you can explicitly add it in. So, um, so the, those and and there are a number of Microsoft, um, well, not just Microsoft, but a number of Microsoft libraries um, and external libraries that are increasingly taking advantage of, of Lambda expressions. And so this sort of opens up the possibility for uh, VB users to take more advantage of those libraries uh, in an easier way. Because now, like um, a good example is the Parallel Link library that um, is part mm -hmm. of our parallel framework um, takes you know quite a bit of advantage of those things and so um, those libraries become much more usable with these this feature great well I know you have a few other features that you showed today we're gonna finish up this episode and we can come back and chat more about the rest of VB10 yeah thanks for more information visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts
Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.